give our friend, relative, sister of um, grand send off, right? So we're all here because we have some connection with Cecilia and we know that she's with us. She's here and she's enjoying all of this and seeing all of you. So on behalf of the Sisters of Notre Dame, I'd like to welcome Cecilia's family and all of her friends. And maybe family could just raise your hand so we have an idea of how many of you are here. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you have a place of honor. I just need to let you know that there's a restroom in the lobby as you came in. And there's another restroom. If you go down the hallway, you'll see a sign that says restroom. Just go through that door and you'll see another door, okay? And at communion time, we'll ask everyone to remain in their seat and sisters will bring communion to the people here in the round. And Father will go to the center uh, for the people who are sitting outside in the annex like. Did I leave anything out? We all remain seated. We all remain seated. Uh -huh. For mass. For mass. Oh, for mass, okay, right. Yes, we have some people that have difficulty standing. So to be in solidarity with them, we all remain seated. All right, Kathleen, I think we're ready to begin. All right. Would you like a shepherd? Please join me in um, our opening song. We will sing it. We will rise again. <laughs> Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather here today, we gather to remember and to give God thanks for the blessings and the joys and the love that He has given to each and every one of us through our great sister Sylvie. Through sister's love and joy and beauty that she brought to others, we gather to do two things. First of all, we gather to give God thanks, and second of all, we gather to celebrate. Sister Cecilia's life, a life that has been intertwined 
in so many other people's lives. Today, everything that the Sister Celia dreamed of, the fulfillment of the promise that was promised to her in the waters of baptism, that if we die with Christ, we will rise with Christ. We bless Cecilia with this water as a sign and reminder of our new life with Jesus Christ. For in the waters of baptism, she died with Christ and she rose with him into everlasting life. When she was brought into the church, she was clothed in the garment of Christ. We use this symbol and sign of that garment as a sign and reminder of our new life with Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. The Christ who promised her everlasting life. The Christ who took her to himself. We pause and we pray and we remember the wonder and the greatness of the God who loves us. So at this moment, um, we will take a moment to listen to what I call the gospel according to Sister Cecilia, <laughs> the reflection on her life. Thank you. My name is Sister Liz Tiernan, and many years ago, Sister Cecilia asked me to do her eulogy, to say a few words about her. And of course, at that time, I said yes. I never thought much about it although I was happy to say yes. But after many, many years, I became more and more honored to be able to stand here and create a eulogy and present it. Because even though Cecilia was my very good friend and my mentor, as the years went by more and more, she became my inspiration. My inspiration for how to be a good sister of Notre Dame de Namur. I'm not sure that I have achieved that yet, but <laughs> Cecilia certainly has. So we come together in Christ's peace to celebrate the life of Sister Cecilia, to mourn because we are human and we will miss her, to rejoice because her new life has begun and to celebrate because we believe in the mighty power of Jesus' resurrection. As I thought about how to begin this reflection, I asked myself, what words would Cecilia like me to use to express her joy at having you here? And as I thought about it, I heard Cecilia say to me, for goodness sakes, Liz, just say welcome. I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. You know, I never use a lot of words to say what I mean. And so I say from Cecilia, simply, welcome. And from me, some words. Welcome to her wonderful family. You helped create the beautiful, loving, compassionate, contented person she was. Growing up with all of you, facing together the challenges that life brings, you all were the sustaining presence that kept her balanced, that received her love and laughter, and the simple goodness she spread among you. I know she would want me to let you know how much your visits meant to her, especially more recently. A sister here at the Province Center described to me Cecilia greeting one of her family members. Liz, she said, Cecilia's whole face lit up. That person truly was a light to her. Welcome to her friends from St. Lucy's Parish who knew and loved Cecilia for many years. She was someone who could always be counted on to listen and give good advice when needed. To her sisters and former sisters and associates, many of whom were blessed to be lifelong friends, welcome. 
She loved you and drew strength from your support and your own dedication to spreading the word that our God is so very good. In these last few years, she was happy to share life with many of you once again in this wonderful province center where she felt at home from day one. So welcome, all of you, to this celebration. You truly did light up her life. Those of you who have heard my presentations before know that I often begin with these words of C.S. Lewis. Talking about God is like asking, how many minutes are there in the color yellow? Mm -hmm. For the essence of God can never be captured in words. God must be experienced. This phrase came back to me as I pondered what to say about Cecilia. For her spirit cannot be contained in words alone. She was someone we all experienced with joy and delight. Although today it is necessary to use words as we remember her and share memories of her, we understand that they can never completely describe the Cecilia we all know and love. Cecilia was admired wherever she served. As a first grade teacher in Redwood City, a seventh grade teacher in Millbrae, a teacher of the junior high in Portland, Oregon, where with her good buddies, Ann Carmel, June Canoles, and Dolores Fowler, they created the phrase that the Northwest was, quote, the land of the free. <laughs> and the home of the brave. <laughs> the land of the free, obviously. They were miles away from Saratoga. <laughs> and so they were given the freedom to just live their life. But they needed to have courage because their pastor at St. Stephen's was the superintendent of schools. <laughs> What a community they were. I first experienced Cecilia when she arrived at St. Mark's Seattle on the same day I did to take up her new ministry. I later discovered that this was her first assignment as a brand new principal and superior. This was my second assignment and as a young sister, only two years out of the junior eight, I was young and fresh and eager to do things right. So on that first evening at the end of supper, I remembered what I thought I had been taught in the novitiate, and that is you must always ask a blessing of the superior on the first day of your new mission. And so, determined to do things right, at the end of supper, I made my way to the head of the table where Cecilia was sitting. And I knelt down beside her chair. Startled and dismayed, she cried out, Liz, what are you doing? <laughs> In a trembling voice, I said, Sister Superior, I just wanted to ask a blessing. On your knees? <laughs> she said, get up. Let's do the dishes, and then we'll go for a ride. <laughs> and that's how seven delighted nuns in full habit trooped into the local Baskin and Robbins shop <laughs> and ordered their favorite ice cream cones. A blessing indeed. That was my first in introduction to Cecilia in her role as Sister Superior. I soon discovered that the word superior did not fit her at all. For Cecilia never considered herself 
superior to anyone. <clears throat> Although she was traditional in many ways, she was not an institutionalist. People always came before rules. As a principal, she was excellent, and her qualities of simplicity, compassion, dedication, and contentment served her well and made her beloved by teachers, staff, parents, and students. She never seemed to lose her cool. I used to say she was unflappable in spite of the challenges of dealing with a less than perfect pastor. Cecilia was the greatest advocate for and support of her teachers and staff. She never tried, she tried never to ask too much of them and took lunchroom duty by herself every day so that the teachers could rest and relax in the faculty room. They in turn loved her and would do anything for her. Cecilia loved a party. On the last day of school one year, I remember that the janitor, Mr. Hoskins, came to her and asked if he could bring some treats, just some simple treats, for the teachers because it was the last day of school. Of course, she said yes. And as the school emptied out of students and parents eager to begin summer vacation, little did they know that Cecilia had called everyone to the staff room where she and Mr. Hoskins had set up pizza and beer <laughs> for all of us. I share this next part without hesitation. Cecilia was the best community person I have ever known. She made a home wherever she went. And Father Jandro, who said mass and had breakfast with us every day, used to say that Cecilia was a nester. She made a nest for all of us, quietly and without pretension where we all knew we were loved and supported. Cecilia and Viv, her longtime friend, carried on the tradition of creating a place of welcome for those who came to their Shaw, Shaw, Shaw Street home in San Jose. They were the queens of hospitality, and many of us, traveling from a distance, counted on their open arms. Today, I am sure that C Cecilia and Viv are together creating nests for those they meet in heaven. Mm -hmm. I haven't said much about Cecilia's spirituality because she rarely talked about her faith. She simply lived it. Like St. Julie, whom she admired and learned from, Cecilia lived a life of simple love and kindness and proclaimed with everything she did and said that our God is so very good. I would like to leave you with some words from our recent congregational leader, Sister Teresita Wynn, that I believe aptly describe Cecilia Wallace, a woman of holiness and very few words. I have put these words on um, a holy card. It's not really a holy card, but these will be on a table at the back of the church when we're finished here. So, these are the words that I think um, describe Cecilia from Teresita. She says, let us pray that our lives in mission will need less and less spoken words as we embody, incarnate the word in every interaction, holding in our heart all that God gives us. May our stillness in the spirit draw us into the wooden oneness that is love. 
I asked Sister Teresita for permission to use her words. And she wrote to me and said, Liz, thank you for allowing me to be a part of the message, message for Sister Cecilia. And so we say, Cecilia, we love you and we celebrate your new life in heaven. everybody. <clears throat> this place brings fond memories. When we, were young, I don't know why. when we were really young, Donnie and Patrick, we'd come out a lot of Sundays and just play while the nuns visited and our parents visited. It's a, it's a special place. And then when she retired here, she'd come here and just, just enjoy it. We just enjoyed it here. Well, I am Robert. She called me Bobby. And uh, it was, she was just a, it, when, when she was, <clears throat> she became a nun before my brother Patrick and I were even born, you know, in 19th, I don't know, late 40s, I guess it would be. What? 49. 49. And I was born in 51, born in 54. But anyway, we're here to celebrate Cecilia, a life well lived. Um, uh, her formative years, which I was not around, was South Dakota when our parents, you know, started their family in South Dakota and started having a lot of children, which is a tradition in our, the Catholic Church. It was, I don't know so much anymore. We had nine children. And so, that is, I believe she was born there, and my brother Bill was born there, and some other siblings. But uh, they were... Uh, and our, our father was a farmer. And so they, they had a tough life there. It was hard. It was hard. And uh, they were hard times for our family. And across the whole country, it was, everybody was struggling during the, the 30s. So with faith in God and uh, searching for a better life, they headed to California, which was said to be, you know, the land of milk and honey. And they ultimately found themselves in San Jose, several blocks from St. Leo's church and school, which I believe we all attended. This was priority one for our parents. Be near the church, be involved, the school. It was, uh, it was foundational to a good family life. And it was, it was a beautiful time. Sometimes I, I think, reminisce about that, that era. It was so safe in San Jose and so family oriented. It was, it was terrific. So, and my mom said that when they finally came to California, they never lacked for the basics, because they struggled in, in South Dakota, but once they got to California, it was, it, was, it was pretty good, really good. So, with this foundation, Cecilia, who we all call Seal, said she was called to a life, because I asked her, you know, what, what, what made you choose a life, you know, like this, and she goes, she goes, I didn't choose it, I was called to a life of service, family, and community. During her years, uh, her early years, uh, when she was wearing the habit and all, she would come to set our house on Shasta Avenue, but at that time, they didn't really uh, want nuns to go back in the house, and so she'd come to the breakfast room window and we're all chatting and stuff. It was, it was cute. But, Actually, fortunately, in the 60s, they relaxed a lot of those rules. She dropped the black and white habit. She looked pretty, we got good pictures of her in that, though. <laughs> you know, it's great. Uh, but she, our, uh, Cecil, Cecilia was like our mother. Hardworking, disciplined, devoted to God and the church. During her early years, uh, she, she used, used to teach at Belmont here, and it was just, great to be able to come and visit her and, and such. It was, it was fun. And then, uh, and then when she ultimately ended up, we visit her in Seattle and that sort of thing on family trips, but she ended up uh, being uh, at Saratoga, the retirement area in Saratoga. 
but it was so great because we had we always have almost every summer we'd have a large family reunion and a lot of us in this room were there it was a great time it was a swimming baseball potluck probably 50 60 people were there every time it was it was delightful you know we we're all proud of her because she was you know a successful she had a successful life and a, a simple life but successful it was really great and uh uh, as 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 we all got older in the last you know twenty years, you know it, we spent a lot of time around Cecilia because she was in Saratoga and, and, and here, and uh, but it was I was going to say, oh, she was an easygoing person as you can tell, but and but we used to be a pack of teaser and my brother Donald was a character he teased her, and because she was kind of gullible. In a way, you know, she was so, so, so sincere. You know, she listened to you, and then you get her with the singer. You know, but she was she was cute, very cute, I thought. And and we all and we grew to love Vivian so much. She was part of our family. She was a delight. It was so hard to lose her too. Really, it's hard to seal. And then Beverly picked up the pace though. She'd call her every night. Our sister Beverly. You would see her like that, it's beautiful. And uh, I just wanna, as a family and each of us here, wanna express our thankfulness and gratitude for what you brought to Seal's life. And Seal, we miss and love you. Through the ending of present things, open up the beginning of things to come. Grant, we pray, that the soul of your servant, our sister Cecilia, may be led by you to attain the inheritance of eternal redemption. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We have just heard wonderful stories we have heard Sister Cecilia's stories. Now we pause and we ponder and we listen now to God's stories in the sacred scripture. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Are you not aware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that Jesus as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. We too might live in newness of life, if then we have died with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord.
of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should have nothing of all that has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. My brothers and sisters, the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. And it is a beautiful morning. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful morning because we gather to give God thanks and praise. And we gather to give God back to give back to God what has God has given to us for so many years. We live to die and we die to live so that when we die, there's nothing left to die. Sister Cecilia has made many roadways into each and every one of our lives. Beautiful stories that shared with our families, beautiful stories that were shared with the sisters, and many, many other stories that we really don't know about and we don't need to know about. But what we do need, what we do know is that Sister Cecilia was dedicated and committed to what it was to be a true sister of the gospel. A woman who was rooted in faith, rooted in who Jesus Christ was, not by her words, but by her actions. And to her actions, she brings about the kingdom of God. Because you see, I believe Sister Cecilia was always connected to heaven. Always. She came from heaven, she returns to heaven. Being Irish, I learned lots of stories growing up as a kid. But one story I always share with people at funerals is a story of my grandmother and I when I was 10 years old. And it's what I call the grandma moment. And you never think that you will ever have a grandma moment that you will use later on in life. But when I was 10 years old, I used to visit my grandmother a lot because I truly loved her for two things. I loved her because she was a character, but I also loved her because she made great, great chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and she'd always send you home with a bag of them. But one day we were talking, and I love, I love babies. Babies are absolutely just the greatest gift that God has ever given to us. If I see a baby, even in the store, if I'm shopping, if I see somebody with a newborn baby, I gotta ask the person, can I hold that baby in my arms? There's something about holding life in our arms, isn't there? Well, I remember my grandmother saying to me, she said, by the way, she said, do you know that the lady two doors away from us, Mrs. O'Callaghan, they had just had a new beautiful baby girl? And I said, yes, I had heard. And she said, isn't it wonderful and beautiful? And then comes the grandma moment. And she said, do you know, Christopher, she said, that when a baby is born, do you know that for the first couple of years of the baby's life, that the baby cannot see? And I looked at her and I thought, you're crazy. <laughs> she said, I'm not crazy. I said, yeah, you are. How could you say a baby can't see? She said, I'm telling you 
the baby cannot see. I said, I'm telling you, the baby can't see. He said, well, Mr. Smarty Boots, why do you say that? I said, well, Grandma, logic tells you. She said, well, what do you mean? I said, if you watch a newborn baby, and a newborn baby in the first couple of days and weeks of its life, it does something very unusual. It sleeps a lot. That's not unusual. It's what it does when it's sleeping. If you watch a newborn baby when it's sleeping, every so often the baby will open its eyes, will have the most beautiful smile, then it will close its eyes, mm -hmm. then it will go back to sleep. So I said to my grandma, if the baby can't see, what's the baby smiling at? Because in order to smile, you either have to remember something or you have to see something. And she looked at me and she said, Christopher, 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 always remember and never forget that every time you see a baby smiling, the baby is always remembering what heaven looks like. And whether you're two days old, 94 or 103, it doesn't matter how old we are, we're always remembering what heaven looks like. One of the most contagious things about Sister Cecilia was her smile. Because you see, I believe Cecilia never stopped remembering what heaven looked like. Because in whatever capacity she was called to serve, she created the kingdom of heaven for all of our brothers and sisters, for the poor, the unfortunate, those who needed to be educated, those who needed a good laugh, those who she saw the face of Christ in every single person that she served. And she did it with no fuss. She did it with a great sense of wonder and joy. And she could not do that if she was not connected to Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. And the Christ who fed and nourished her. And the many times she was nourished at the sacred table. And how she took that Eucharist, and how she went out into the world, and how she showed Jesus to every single person that she served. No matter who she came with, no matter what she did, she did it, knowing what the kingdom of God was about. I met Sister Cecilia in 1990 when I was assigned to St. Lucy's. When I met her, I had black hair, now I have gray hair. <laughs> but Cecilia was a dynamite. And I always remember, we got into this whole thing, we had a big center. And the CCD office was very small. So I said to her one day, I said, why don't we switch offices? And she looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, why don't you take the bigger part, the Valley Center, and we'll take the other part. So myself and Sister Cecilia and Sister Rosalie took the whole room apart and we painted it. Remember Rosalie? We painted that place. And Sister Cecilia was just gleaming that she had a bigger place to gather her students because her students were so important to her in the catechetical program. Sister Cecilia never, never allowed herself to take credit because it was always about and she's true to the essence, I believe, of St. Julia, like that sunflower. We always look at sunflowers and they're beautiful, but one of the most things I look at when I look at a sunflower is not so much the flower itself, but it's the stem. Do you ever see the stem mm -hmm. on a sunflower? Mm -hmm. It's so solid, really. And from that solid stem, all this wonderful beauty begins to appear. And when you think of Sister Cecilia, she's been that solid stem in everybody's life. 
And from that stem, we are the results of the seeds that have been planted and sown. We are that sunflower. That sunflower that turns towards the greatness and the goodness of God. Sister Cecilia taught us how to do that. Because she shared with each and every one of us the Eucharist. Not by word, but by action. She took serious what Jesus said, take this bread, eat it, and then go and share it with our brothers and sisters. She took seriously what Jesus did at the Last Supper when he washed the feet of his disciples and mandated that his disciples must go and do as he did to take care of our brothers and sisters. So as we gather today, we gather to know that we have been blessed and we have been touched in so many wonderful ways. You see, I always think funerals are like a good Italian dinner. We've all been to Italian restaurants, haven't we? And you can smell the herbs and the spices, and you know that they're making fresh bread. And we gather at the table and we share stories, stories, stories that we just heard tonight, today. Family, friends, who's sick, who's dying, whose funeral I'm going to, who's having a baby, whatever the stories are, as we wait patiently for them to bring out the food. And then they bring out plates of pasta, don't they? And they put it right in front of us, and we eat it, and we eat it, and we eat it, and we eat it, until <laughs> there's nothing left except the sauce. And then what do we do? We take that fresh bread, and we dip it into the sauce, and we eat it. And then we say to the person beside us, oh my God, you gotta taste the sauce. If you think about it as a family, as sisters, as a great community, we have been dipping into Sister Cecilia's sauce. The sauce of what it was to love, to care. The sauce of kindness and compassion. The sauce of generosity. The sauce of giving of herself. And the greatest sauce of all that she gives to us is the sauce of true love. The greatest recipe of all. And it's not what this table is about. The greatest recipe of all. But the most important thing about the recipe is, I have to hear some of my Italian friends saying, you know what, I have this great recipe for lasagna. And when I die, it's going to die with me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, why? Why will you not share the recipe? Well, Sister Cecilia has been sharing that recipe for all of her life of how good God is by our words are few, but our actions were great. And she has been sharing that recipe of the true love that she believed in. And the true love of Sister Cecilia's life was Jesus Christ. God fell in love with her, and she fell in love with him. And the rest is history, really. And from that love, you and I have been the benefactors of all of those wonderful sauces. And we've been dipping into them every single day because we have been tasting and seeing the wonder and the beauty and the love of God. And you see, you say, what was sister's secret? And the secret was, it's not really a secret, is to share the recipe to bring God to others. Isn't that what she spent her whole life doing? And now God has promised her that in the end of time, he will come back for her. And I believe that's where she is. Because you see, I believe before we die, and I believe before Sister Cecilia died, I believe God always comes to visit us. And I believe God takes us by the hand and gives us a great sword of heaven and he shows us what heaven is like. 
And he came that day to see Cecilia, and he took her on a great tour and showed her what happened was like. She probably spent a few minutes talking to a friend or relative, a sister Julie. And then Jesus said, you know what, Cecilia, I want you to do one more thing for me. And she said, what's that, Lord? He said, I want you to go back home. I want you to pack lightly, and we're going to come back to you. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Cecilia went back home. She packed lightly, and Jesus came back home. And Jesus took her by the hand, and Jesus took her to himself. Cecilia was part of the great love story of Jesus Christ because she herself was the essence of love. Love of God, love of family, love of the Christian community, love of our sisters. She adored all of these sisters. She really did. Love all of them. And through that love, we have become a better world, a better place, and a better community. And I believe if I was to sum up everything about Sister Cecilia's life, I could sum it up in the words of an old song that my grandmother used to sing when I was a kid. And if you can imagine Jesus and Cecilia together, and imagine Jesus singing to Cecilia, and imagine Jesus singing this song. I give to you, and you give to me, true love, true love, and on and on I will always be, love forevermore, for you and I have a guardian angel on high with nothing to do so to give to you was to give to me love forevermore love forevermore no fancy halos no fancy wings but Cecilia was a great gift of love Jesus gave to each and every one of us. And today we say thank you, Jesus, for that great gift. And we give back to you what you have given to us. And the greatest recipe of all, and the greatest lesson that she teaches us all, is to love one another in the way that I have loved you. Almighty Father, you raised Jesus Christ, your Son, from the dead. With confidence now, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. This part of Mass is called Prayers of the Faithful, our prayers. And I'm so pleased to be here. Cecilia and I walked onto the property of Saratoga. Well, maybe we were driven. <laughs> On August the 15th, 1949, I have known her for over 73 years. And loved her. So our prayers are prayers of thanksgiving for Seal, and they're also prayers for those that we all know Cecilia cared about those for whom she prayed. So if you would respond, loving God, hear our prayer after each one, it will be our prayer. So God of all creation, we believe that our sister Cecilia now rejoices in her new life with you. 
whom she loved and served so faithfully here on earth. May her joy console all who have been touched by her generous, gentle kindness. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Generous God, we ask you to bless abundantly all who have loved and supported Seal throughout her life, her family, her Notre Dame sisters, friends and co-workers, students, and during these last days, all who accompanied her so lovingly on her journey home to you. We pray. Amen. Amen. God of true and lasting peace, we pray for all in our troubled world who are suffering from the violence of war, especially in Ukraine, from oppression, hunger, and neglect, disease, disease forced migration, natural disasters. Inspire leaders of nations and churches to use their power and influence to bring justice and peace to all, we pray. Compassionate God, give strength to all those weighed down with heavy burdens. Console those who need comfort Give light to those who stumble in the dark. <clears throat> Heal those who are broken. And inspire all of us to love one another as you love us. Loving God. God knows our deepest needs and our prayers. So I ask you now to take a few moments just to say your own thanks and pray for those you love. And so we pray, loving God, hear our prayer. Eternal God, as St. Augustine taught us, you have made us for yourself alone. And our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Secure in this knowledge, we ask you to grant these prayers through Christ our Lord.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the gracious glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all our justice. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice we offer you for our sisters and sake. Grant her everlasting joy in the land of the living, and unite her now with all the family in the happiness of the saints in heaven. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the flesh of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. And to him the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in the chorus of exaltation. We praise you as we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the presence of our God, let us bow our heads. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, the Bishop of this diocese, with all the clergy, the religious, and all your holy people. Remember your servant, our sister Cecilia, whom you have called today from this world to your son. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the joy of the resurrection. 
Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Julie, St. Christopher, St. Francis and Claire, St. John of the Cross, St. Oscar Romero, St. Patrick and St. Bridget, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be coerced to eternal life. We may pray and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, for the fate of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And on this wonderful, joyful occasion as we celebrate this joy of the resurrection for our sister, let us turn to one another and offer each other the sign of that peace. With that song, I know. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm worthy that you should enter into my life. And when you say the word, my soul shall be
heaven received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory. We humbly implore you, O Lord, our God, for our departed servant, our sister Cecilia, that cleansed by the great paschal mystery she may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come. And we ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. For the final commendation, uh, I would like to say to all of us, or for all of you, I should say, and especially to Cecilia's family, thank you for giving us this wonderful opportunity to share her life. Uh, you lost a member of your family, we lost a member of our family too. But as you can tell, um, we have been truly blessed for all of these wonderful things. So please know that we will pray for you in the days ahead um, and know that you know uh, you are always in our prayers. And we can give thanks and especially give thanks to the, gift, the parents who gave us the great gift of Sister Cecilia, not just to her world, especially to the people of the church. They've been truly blessed. To all of Sister Cecilia's sisters, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity and privilege to be here today. But thank you for your dedication and your commitment and your love, uh, your love of the church. And especially the joy that you have brought and continue to bring and the many people that you have produced, people like Sister Cecilia, who has truly, truly took to heart what St. Julie asked you to do, is to bring people closer to God. So in the name of the Christian community, I want to thank you sincerely, because I know that women religions don't always get recognized uh, in many ways, um, but I want to recognize uh, all of the great works Cecilia has done and all of the great works that you have done. And those who have gone before us, we have been truly, truly blessed. And that's what's great about our church. We have the saints in heaven and the saints on earth. And the great news about that is you don't have to download them, you don't have to tweet them, you don't have to <laughs> the witness wherever we go. So be very careful. Not that Sister Cecilia will come back to haunt you, <laughs> but you will find her all over the place. You will see her in the smile of somebody's face. You will hear her in the sound of a child's voice. You will see her in the silence of your heart. Because that, like that great sunflower, she has left the great seed in each and every one of us of God's love and God's grace. So we have been truly, truly blessed. And I know it's been a truly honor for me to be here today to celebrate, and maybe it's my Irishness, but funerals are wonderful. Because you see, funerals are God's gift to us. Death is a gift, only for love. And in the waters of baptism, God promised Cecilia everlasting love. And now we believe that that's where she is. She's with the Lord. So as we come now to the final commendation, we send her back home now to the Lord. So before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May the ease of sadness and strengthen our hope. And one day we shall joyfully greet her again with the love of Christ, which conquers all things and destroys death itself. And your response will be to receive her soul and present you to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to our aid. Come to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present you to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May the angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive her soul and present you to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord, and may a perpetual light shine upon her. Receive your soul and present to God most high. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our sister Cecilia to the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, that she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are the sciences of your goodness and of your fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn to us, us listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of our faith, and that we all meet in Christ, and with all our brothers and sisters forever. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. And this is one of my favorite prayers. It's a very short prayer, but I always love it. 
And again, it's my Irish imagination. Because you see, I believe before we die, at the four corners of our bed, there are four angels waiting for us. And I believe before Cecilia died, at the four corners of her bed, there were four angels waiting for her. And at the moment of death, they just took her and they put them into their wings and carried her gently home to God. Because here's what the prayer says. Cecilia, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to that holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you when Lazarus is poor no longer. And may you have eternal rest. Amen. <coughs> and may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the rose rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine softly in your face. May the rain gently in your fields. And I'll be born in again. May the Lord Jesus Christ hold you, your family, your friends, your loved ones, in the palm of his hand. And may we be blessed in his name, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace now, will we take our sister to her place of rest.
I'm sorry. To Bobby, to Kathleen for the music, and especially for all of you for being here. Let's give everyone a round of applause. And we'd like to thank Roberto for recording this. It'll be put out so that you could look at it another time. And we can share it with the other sisters in our east-west province. Many, most of them are on the east coast. We have five of them with us today, though. They might want to raise their hands. The east-west team. Yes, we're grateful for them to be here. And so I'd like you to know that we have a light lunch upstairs. Um, you can take either the elevator by the lobby or the elevator on this hall. Um, and then we will actually have the burial at Mission Santa Clara at 2.30 this afternoon. So God bless you all. Thank you and bon appetit.